Today I will draw and paint a raccoon. For this I'm using watercolor paper and I'm drawing with a sharpie, but you could draw with pencil as well. I'm going to start off with a little nose for the raccoon right in the center of my picture. From there, I'm going to kind of add in a little line that's kind of a dashed line. It's not a perfect line that goes around the nose and then kind of comes in towards the nose at the top. From there, I'm going to make kind of a dashed line that comes up a little bit like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw to the side of that area an eye. Notice that my eye is kind of slanted and it starts with just a thin line on the top and a curved line on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and color in my eye except for one little dot that I want to leave white so it looks like it has a little highlight. I'm going to color in the nose as well, leaving a highlight on the top, just like I did for the eyes. I'm going to continue this kind of dashed or dotted line way out to the side by curving above each eye and then going out kind of flattening out as I get towards the edges. Then I'm going to go back in towards the bottom of the face. They have kind of a triangular look to them. I'm going to do the same thing again above that line. Also just using kind of a dashed line. The reason I'm using a dashed line is because I want to kind of indicate the fur of the raccoon. And so by using that, it'll kind of help me when I'm doing the fur later. Next, I'm gonna make more of a solid line on the top. Notice it has a slight curve to it. This is gonna be where the hat is gonna go. Notice that it's a little bit shorter than the raccoon's face. I'm adding the top part of the hat and then bringing it down to join the bottom part of the hat. Then I'm going to make a curve line above that. And then you can decide if you want a little poof ball on the top or not. I'm going to go ahead and add a little ball on the top of my winter hat, like so. I also want to give my raccoon a scarf. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line that curves under the raccoon's face and goes down a little bit on each side and then over to connect to make it look like a scarf. If you wanted to even add a section coming down, you could too. I'm gonna to have the little raccoon paw kind of holding on to the tree underneath the scarf. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there too. Then I'm just gonna indicate the top part of the raccoon's head here, kind of going up into the hat. And I wanna kind of put about where I want my tree to be opening up around the raccoon. So it's going to kind of hug to the sides of the raccoon, but it may have a little bit more of a point to the top and the bottom, like so. Just a little hole inside of the tree. At this point, I'm ready to start painting. So I'm going to put my marker away, get my paints out, and get them ready to go. Now today I am painting with gouache paint. It's an opaque watercolor. Um, it's very similar to tempera paint, so if you have tempera, you could use that. You could also use acrylic paint or even watercolor if you would like. I'm starting off with kind of a gray, so I've mixed some white and black together to make this gray color. And I'm doing the top part of the raccoon's head just under the hat, and then you can see it kind of goes down to the center part above the nose. I might make it just a little bit darker right next to the hat, so I'm adding a little bit more black into that section to make it a little bit more shaded or shadowed right underneath that hat and just kind of the top part of the face. I'm also going to add some dark down here at the corners of the face with mostly black, just a little bit of white mixed in, and then right next to this uh, first shape that we made around the nose, I'm going to make that nice and dark too. 
For the rest of the face, I want to go a little lighter. So I added a little bit more white to my gray to go around the eyes so that we don't lose them. I colored my eyes in black. So if I put black paint right around them, they'd be very hard to see. So in this case, I'm just making it a little lighter so that my eyes don't get lost in the color. And I'm gonna fill in the rest of the part of the face down here with a kind of a lighter gray. I'm just using this round brush. It's nice because it comes to a nice point so I can have a lot of control over where my paint goes. I'm also going to do the little paw that's hanging out under the scarf, kind of holding on to the tree here for the raccoon. I'm going to maybe extend it a little more. You can see that the paint has no problem going over the Sharpie, which is kind of nice. So if you don't really want the Sharpie lines to show, you can just kind of paint over them. Under the paw, I want it to be nice and dark. This is kind of the inside of the tree, so it would be quite dark around the raccoon. I want the raccoon to stand out and to have this area around the tree very dark around the raccoon to make it look like he's coming out of a hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and use pretty much straight black kind of right next to the raccoon all the way around to kind of make him pop out. I'm being very careful as I do this. And if it makes it easier, you can even turn your paper around or upside down so you can get to these angles a little bit better. Like on this side especially, I could have turned my paper upside down just to get to that side better since I'm right-handed. Being very careful to go around my lines of my hat. And I'm kind of working it up into that corner a little bit. Next, I'm adding a little bit of brown. I didn't even wash my brush. I just went straight into the brown. So my brown is quite dark still. And as I get away from the hole, I can kind of make it lighter and lighter. But for now, I want it to be pretty dark because again, it's kind of going into the tree. As I get away from the raccoon and the hole, I can add some lighter browns to my brush so that it looks like it's the bark of the tree and not quite so dark. I do like brushing my brush strokes kind of in a line that follows the way the tree would grow. So instead of making horizontal lines, I'm trying to keep my lines kind of vertical or going around the raccoon um, to make them all kind of connect really nicely here. I will continue adding brown and I'm getting lighter and lighter as I move away from the raccoon, basically filling up the rest of my paper with these lighter browns. You can see by using these brush strokes too, it kind of gives the indication of some texture to the bark of the tree, which I really like. So by just using these kind of little brush strokes here, um, it gives my tree some nice texture and I'm getting lighter and lighter as I move away from the raccoon. So he looks like he's really tucked inside of this tree. I was looking out into my backyard one day when I actually spotted a little family of raccoons going into or climbing up of my neighbor's tree. It was just amazing watching them. It was a mom and about three babies climbing up the tree. And um, oh my goodness, they were so cute. I know the raccoons are not the best for people's yards. Sometimes they can cause some problems, but uh, to see them during the day and to watch them climbing that tree and uh, you know, I don't know what they were doing or where, what they were looking for, but the little babies up in that tree were just so adorable. And I even got a good picture of one and ended up painting it a while back, but just such a cute little raccoon hanging out in the branches of the tree. Now they did not have hats and scarves, but that's kind of fun to add those in our painting like we are doing today. Now, as I get towards the corners of my painting here, you can see that I'm getting darker with my paint. And that's just a, an art, artistic um, decision here because I want the viewer's eye to stay in the center. So by darkening the corners, it kind of makes you keep away from the corners and focus more on the center part 
of the painting. So that's one of the things I usually tend to do in a lot of my paintings is kind of darken the corners or kind of close them off so that the viewer's eye will stay in the middle um, looking at the subject, in this case, this adorable raccoon. I'm gonna go ahead and finish filling out my paper with the brown paint. All right, I sped up my painting a little bit so that you can kind of get the idea. While I'm letting my background dry, I'm going to go ahead and add some color to my hat and my scarf. I decided to go with red and I'm painting kind of a, a darker red first. And then while it's wet, I might even add some highlights to the red. You can do this with white or with pink, whatever colors you have. So I'm kind of filling in both the scarf and the hat with the dark and then I wanted to give it a little bit more interest so I'm just going to add these lighter lines with a lighter color just to kind of give it some um, dimension some texture some interest you could also add like a fun pattern or design on the hat or the scarf as well so it's kind of a fun addition Next, I want to add a little bit of greenery around my tree so you can kind of decide what kind of tree or greenery you want to add. In my case, I decided to add some pine needles. So I'm starting with kind of the little center line and then from there kind of fanning out these little needles that go on either side of that line. And um, I do that just by adding diagonal lines that kind of come away from the middle and work their way down the branch. And I'm especially focused on the edges of the picture. It's kind of like a, a nice pine frame for the raccoon. So I'm using a darker green right now and I'm just kind of filling in where I want the pine needles to go. And then I will come back in and highlight them with a lighter green so they stand out a little bit more. I don't want the contrast in the needles to be so much that it draws attention away from the center of my picture, the raccoon. So I'm trying to keep it so it's not quite so wild and crazy, but I do like that softened um, greenery look around the edges of this painting. So you can add as much or as little of this as you want. Another fun addition would be to add snow by maybe adding in a little bit of um, white powder or um, even just like splattering the picture with some snow as well. And that would make it very wintry um, looking too. But I decided just to keep it simple with the greenery and the raccoon kind of hanging out there in the tree. Anyway, thanks so much for following along. I hope you enjoyed doing this little raccoon painting with me and please check out my channel Elkie Art for more fun tutorials. Hope to see you there again soon. Have a good one.